why that I was going to try to write a poem about each one of the elements in the periodic table. Right. <laughs> 232? Like, yeah. 114, I think, or something. It's, 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 you're all, you're going to do the ones that only last for like a millisecond? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you know, you know Einsteinium. I've got, I've, you know, well, Einsteinium has already been done, and, I'm like, and I've decided that I'm going to do the ones um, that I, when I read these, I'm only, I, I was also thinking that if I actually got this done, I might put that into a collection book and have a book of all the, the periodic table of poetry. But um, I thought the only time I'd read them is if I was doing any sort of feature like this. So, I mean, I read a few at um, the Poetry Bomb where it was raining and I was out by the train station and so nobody heard anything anyway. <laughs> and, um, Don't hold and your sample of sodium up in the rain. <laughs> 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 I learned that the hard way. I heard that the hard way. Blew up in my face. Don't smoke while you're holding your sample of magnesium. Yeah, sodium in, in, in water very active. Really? Oh yeah, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Pure sodium, yeah. No kidding. In the form of salt, sodium chloride, it's ions. It's, it's so. different ions. Yeah. 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 Well, so and that's the thing. I was like, all right, I'm, I know that I'm going to be reading at Perlon Cafe and a show in Evanston in a month, and I'm going to be. And I figured I'm going to do all the ones that are the Neptunium, Plutonium. I'll have those. I'll have all of those grouped together California. along with others. I haven't done California yet, though. But I was going to do all the planetary ones together. Mercury, I'd even throw in there. But, uh, um, and I figured probably all the ones that about, guess what I usually talk about, death, um, will probably be at my feature for the open mic that I host at the cafe, which is on the Wednesday before uh, Thanksgiving. So how many people? show up for that oh. anyway but um, but I figured I'm like I've got, I'm gonna try to find happier pieces or pieces that relate to the air around us or being on the beach or anything and I was trying to come up with like figure out what ones would be for an appropriate mood for reading things for the beach poets and even though I actually read this first one at uh, the Poetry Bomb nobody heard it so I'm going to start with this piece number eight <laughs> in the periodic table oxygen in the South Pacific Ocean, I held my breath, plunged in, and swam deeper into the water to get away from the schools of, to, get, to get closer to the schools of white-tipped sharks huddled at the bottom of the ocean. With my flippers, I pushed myself deeper into the water. The now useless snorkel was my only remainder, reminder of error as I kept going, with only my mask for navigation. Uh, though the moving sand did not entirely obstruct the water. The sun grew less intense the farther I traveled. Just remember to not get too close to the sharks, I had to keep telling myself. <laughs> I almost froze when I spotted the stingray. They work so hard to avoid being seen so they can surprise their prey and have their next meal. I, I spotted it, and it made me stop. It surprised me that I had come this far and nothing but a little water separated me from the animals that could seal my fate. I stared for a while, then realized that I needed to get some air, so I turned toward the light. I had been underwater so long that the oxygen was pulled from my muscles and I didn't have the energy to kick. I panicked. When you become acutely aware of your desperate need for air, your body plays tricks on you. I, I forgot about looking back at the sharks and stingray below. I even forgot about the sea lions and the lion seals above. I I'll deal with whatever is on the surface once I get there. Now, uh, keep your get yourself able to kick. Think. You can do it. Push. I managed to kick my legs once and started to move my way through the water. I hoped the momentum would keep me going, but nothing can be fast enough any longer. You can do this, I thought. Push again. I pushed. I moved. But the surface still seemed miles away. And now, and now I know there's twice as much hydrogen around me as oxygen. But oxygen is so much bigger than hydrogen. Uh, oxygen is the most abundant chemical element by mass in our biosphere, in our air, sea, and land. But I can't get to the oxygen in this water. I can't let this be the death of me. My chest started to tighten. My chest started burning like someone lit a match and the last oxygen in my body was setting my lungs on fire. 
I clenched my teeth tighter around that snorkel mouthpiece. I, I knew I couldn't breathe yet, but I couldn't let that piece go free and possibly move my mask while I was trying to save myself. Come on, I thought. Your legs are strong. You can do this. So I pushed again until I could see a few people trying to swim toward me. I tried to keep moving until someone threw their arm around my waist. I hoped they would be able to breathe for the both of us until we broke the surface. I remember feeling wet sand being pushed against my skin as they dragged me out of the water until they let me lay on my side so I could cough. I had no water in me, but I had to do anything I could to give myself oxygen again. Once I was able to breathe comfortably again, I, I tried to think of my breathing. I, I know I can't get oxygen toxicity from breathing too deeply. Take a deep breath. Get the oxygen to my blood. I your toes are tingling. Inhale deeply. Now imagine your oxygenated blood rushing to your feet. The oxygen is to your brain now. Keep thinking, mentally pushing the oxygen through your body. When I got back inside that evening, they had started a fire in a fireplace for me. And I thought, how fitting. I, I was stuck in the water with all that hydrogen and oxygen until I could have some oxygen to breathe again. We are all over half water as it is, meaning the majority of our mass is oxygen. And there I was, now at a roaring fireplace with oxygen fueling the fire. It's funny how on this one day, a basic element like oxygen could help me go where I've never been before, could warm me up at the end of the day, and could show me in its absence how crucial it was everywhere in my life. Thank you. Now this has nothing to do with beach or the air. This is uh, number 40. In the periodic table. I'm like, we have to check, I have to write down the numbers. With the You're numbers. just giving this them is, numbers? This is, this, is, this, is, this is zirconium. Zirconium. So I was at the Gem and Jewelry show with my girlfriend and a man I thought would ask me to marry him one day. And my girlfriend stopped at a booth amongst the rows and rows of vendors and told me to look at a huge engagement ring. Well, I didn't want to look. I didn't want to get my hopes up. But seeing the brilliance of the awe-inspiring stones made me ask for the price of one particular ring. They told us it was $375. And we were confused. This ring should be at least two grand. But then we saw that this was a booth of cubic zirconia jewelry. How disappointing. We thought we want the real thing. But looking back, I had to admit that the zirconium was unmistakably breathtaking. I don't know if zirconium is as short-lived as that relationship with the man that went with me to the Gem and Jewelry <laughs> show in Chicago that I thought was going to ask me to marry him one day. But if nothing else, at least some zirconium would have been a nice gesture. Although the element zirconium's most common oxide is zirconium dioxide, also known as zirconia, used as a common diamond substitute, the metallic element zirconium is a lustrous, grayish-white, soft, ductile, and malleable element different from a diamond, I suppose, but also different from the cubic zirconia isotope. Uh, it must, I just have to keep remembering that cubic zirconium is not all zirconium is used for. It was used for not only nuclear applications, but also in the space and aeronautics industries. Zirconium is used for cladding nuclear reaction fuels and materials from zirconium metal and its oxide are even used in space vehicle parts for the resistance to heat. A zirconium isotope has even been recently used in positron emission tomography and cameras. So, ductile or not, maybe zirconium is pretty strong, and exactly at times what I mean. Positron emission tomography. Oh, okay. Yeah. All I could think of is some people do put cameras on their pets. No, 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 like pet scans. What difference would it make? No, 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 no,
Okay, so you're talking about <laughs> like the med medicinal. Yes, exactly. <laughs> that was what that was. Higher. All right, now I'm not going to talk about zirconium anymore. Now I'm going to actually go all the way back to number nine in the periodic table. This is fluorine. I just got a postcard from my dentist telling me it's time to schedule another dental appointment. I thought about fluoride, the fluoride toothpaste I had just changed to recently, and then I thought about water fluoridation. The government adds fluoride to public water supplies, you know, to reduce tooth decay and hopefully prevent, prevent, prevent actually hopefully prevent cavities. Hmm. I wonder how much water I'd have to drink so I wouldn't have to go to the dentist so regularly. <laughs> Wait a minute. I just read that the fluoride has to work, in, for the fluoride to work, it has to remain in contact with the teeth, so fluoride ions that are swallowed aren't going to help me. Maybe I should just gargle water more often. But, but fluoride is just one of the ionic com the compounds of fluorine, and I thought it was funny when I found out that the name of the mineral fluoride is derived from the Latin word flow, because it, adds, it was added to metals to make them flow. Kind of like water, I suppose, which we now add fluorine to. But you know, it's not just teeth that fluorine can help. I mean, check this out. Because of the stability of the carbon-fluorine bond, many drugs are fluorinated to stop their metabolism and prolong their half-lives. You know, I didn't know ever how ever they made those tiny little drugs. Maybe. And now, over 20% of the commercial drugs use fluorine. I mean, scientists have even used the radioactive isotope fluorine 18 with, uh, when performing PET scans. And it was amazing that liquid fluorocarbons can hold gas in solution and can even hold more oxygen and carbon than our own blood. Wow, I didn't realize how useful fluorine was to help humans out. But the thing is, fluorine is actually a really toxic. Some isotopes are used for insecticides, and fluorine attacks the eyes, lungs, liver, and hydrofluoric acid is a pretty nasty contact poison. And chlorofluorocarbon, chlorofluorocarbon, CFCs, have even been strictly regulated through the International Agreement for the Environment and the Depletion of the Ozone. I mean, the U.S. government even has a slew of signs for the dangers of this element. It's a toxic gas. It's corrosive. It's an inhalation hazard. Wait a minute. I thought that it was supposed to be so good for us. I thought it also would be so bad. Oh my God. So, too much of fluorine in the right way can be devastating for you. And in other ways, it can help our bones or help your medication. Fascinating. I guess this is another way we've learned how to take the bad with the good. Or is it that we've learned how to take the good out of the bad? Mm. Maybe I won't start to gargle with hot water because of the fluorine. And maybe I should just deal with everyone's inherent fear of the dentist and just go and come out of it with cleaner teeth for the next six months. <laughs> These are also your Wikipedia books, right? Because before you wrote each one, you had to spend about an hour on it. <laughs> yes, but yeah, if you want to research some of these, yeah, go to Wikipedia. But I didn't know how much Wikipedia stuff I did on this one. This is number 13 in the periodic table. In case you wanted to know, this is aluminum. On our wedding anniversary, I, I try to remember annual anniversary gifts. We've passed wood, copper, iron, and we're just passing tin, steel, and aluminum now. What on earth do I buy for a gift that's aluminum? I don't think he wants an aluminum briefcase. Aluminum picture frame magnets won't work on our stainless steel fridge. Brushed aluminum wall tiles for a kitchen sink might be a good idea, but that's hardly an anniversary gift. Uh, the beaten square aluminum cufflinks looked pretty good, I saw, but I think the only time he ever wore cufflinks was on our wedding day. So, really, aluminum? <laughs> Oh, I suppose the pliability of aluminum shows how our marriage needs to be flexible and durable. And like aluminum, which can be bent without being broken, we have to learn to bend to each other's wills so that we can be stronger when we're together. And we are. With the low density of aluminum, it is, what, it is the third most abundant element here on Earth. But the thing is, the aluminum metal is too reactive chemically to occur natively on Earth, so it's usually only found combined in ways with over 270 different elements. So we see aluminum because it mixes well with others? Good thing, it, good thing it's pliable, ductile, malleable. Better thing it's durable to withstand the test of time. 
And the thing is, I've studied these elements to see how they are needed within the human body. And despite aluminum's abundance here on Earth, it actually has no known function in biology. It's remarkably non-toxic, and because, but because in the body it competes with calcium for absorption, it might even lead to osteoporosis. Okay, I won't eat this element, and I won't use it in cookware. The good thing I don't ever need antacids, which may contain aluminum. And although I've never seen aluminum in antiperspirants, some researchers have postulated that using antiperspirants with aluminum may increase the risk of breast cancer, or potentially Alzheimer's disease. Great news for the woman with breast cancer in her family history. Great news for the woman with a previous brain injury who so I should watch for Alzheimer's disease. Now we have more reasons to worry about this, ingesting this non-toxic aluminum. It's funny, aluminum was first used in car, in car engineering and architecture. Those must have been strong cars and buildings. Oh wait, they were durable, but also I'm afraid flexible for, you know, for cars and buildings, not quite so good. But then aluminum was used in jewelry and fashion. Kind of like those cufflinks, I suppose. Hmm. In the meantime, I'm going to grab some leftovers from the fridge, get it out of the aluminum foil, and eat before pondering what his anniversary present should be. <laughs> well, now we know why. And there we go. And I'm with acidic stuff. It's, it's, it's questionable about what the link is, but there, there tends to be accumulations of aluminum in the house. Yeah, right. So it's like, yeah, you really, you, you don't hear that. You, you hear it. I don't know what the linkage is, but it's something to record. <laughs> you hear it's incredibly non-toxic, but then, whoa, oh, yeah, worry about yeah, it in certain yeah, ways, yeah. yeah. As you learn about a lot of the elements, if you use it in just the right way, it works. But um, this one is number 24 in the periodic table. This is chromium. I like that one. Closing the door to my stainless steel refrigerator, I thought about the popularity of stainless steel. Everyone wants stainless steel fronts for all their kitchen appliances. It costs more at the store, but that's the price for looking good. So I thought, stainless steel, okay, what is that, iron? But, but my wrought iron bed frame and sets of candle holders are pretty much black, and some of it's rusting. So what do they do to make this iron a shiny, different kind of metal? I looked online, and the answer was, 24. And not, not 42, not the meaning of life, but the atomic number. So, you know, when I turned 24 at work, our rep from our press called me. I told him it was my birthday, so he asked me how old I was, and I said, 42. And he sounded surprised, so I told him, oh, you didn't ask me how old I felt. I'm 24. <laughs> but really, chromium is an atomic element number 24, and to make this stainless steel, they add over 10% of chromium to iron to form a steel alloy that doesn't corrode. Good thing my refrigerator won't rust. So, so maybe it's the magnetic properties of chromium that make this metal so appealing to people now. Uh, but the protective element has protected weaponry from Chinese dynasties thousands of years ago, so the Chinese knew, even then, that coating things with this magnetic metallic element would stop corrosion. I mean, we've all heard of things that are chrome-plated, right? Chromium not only makes things last longer, but chromium is also known for a luster when polished, which really makes it for a great sell. I mean, just go to any hangout for motorcyclists, probably on any summer Sunday morning, and you'll see a parked line of a motorcycle, one after another, each outdoing each other with more decorative chrome plating. But then I thought, chromium is even used as a chrome yellow dye for school buses. Chromium salts are used for wood preservers and tanning leathers. And the refractory applications of chromium even work for blast furnaces, cement kilns, molds for firing of bricks, and also the casting of metals. I guess chromium can really extend the life of what we see around us. So I guess it's fitting that when my birthday coincided with this element, I jokingly said that the number in question was actually the answer to the life and the universe and everything. <laughs> I have a short one. I cannot. For some reason, you guys, it's not funny. Uh, this is number 74. Yeah. 
Frisbee's coming this way. Um, this is number 74, a short one called Tungsten. You know, I just adore you so much. And because you like my belly ring and my eyebrow rings and lip ring, I was thinking of getting you a tungsten tongue stud for your birthday. And don't even ask me, why tungsten? Because it has the same metallic qualities as gold and even platinum. And hey, it was on an excellent cool when you told your friends that this tungsten is a tungsten. And besides, I know how you practice with your 22 and 9 mil down at the gun range, and the lead shells are expensive when you practice so much. And tungsten shells are actually even more environmentally friendly, since I know you get into that. I mean, I really know you, and you can still be my little eco-freak and still like shooting stuff, right? So yeah, I have heard some reports that gun range... I have heard some reports that gun range tungsten shell casings sitting in the dirt can seep tungsten into the dirt. But hey, I checked, and tungsten is not toxic according to any reports that I've seen. Tungsten's cheaper than bullets, for bullets than lead, and you can always say that the stud from your tongue is made of the same stuff as the bullets you shoot from your gun. <laughs> I'm limiting the number of elements I'm going to do today, and this is the last one which I thought would be most appropriate for being here, and this one is number 14, silicon. <laughs> sorry, 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 you're laughing though, like I understand why it's appropriate if you don't. <laughs> sorry. I know that silicon is good for plant metabolism, which should make me happy as a vegetarian, as a woman with I don't know how many plants potted and taking over my home. But silicon is barely ever needed for human life. In nature, silicon seems to be better suited for sea sponges. And although I love the sea, the last thing I want to be called is a sponge. <laughs> and, and you know, if silicon is used by anyone in the animal killed kin kingdom, you can believe that I really dislike breast implants made out of silicon or, or made out of anything unnatural in the human body for that matter. And after my LASIK surgery, I even heard that they use silicon for some contact lenses, which makes me glad that I don't wear contacts any longer. <laughs> So silicon doesn't have any, organ any use organically for humans. I guess it makes sense that silicon is actually used by humans in explosives and pyrotechnics. But really, for the abundant element, silicon has to have some better uses for us humans, like in semiconductors or even integrated circuits. But whenever I go out and walk out on the beach, feel the sand work its way between my toes, I should remember that silicon dioxide is pretty much sand. <laughs> but then again, I heard that people were, were suing Taco Bell a few years back because their taco meat filling was only one third meat plus flavorings and a bit of silicon dioxide. So yeah, people were wondering and they were asking if this Taco Bell meat was actually made with sand. <laughs> I know, I know, Taco Bell had to explain that silica, or silicon dioxide, is commonly used for foods, and Taco Bell was just using this harmless oxide to absorb water and keep meat from clumping. Hmm, so if silicon is common enough to be under our feet on the beaches around the world, and if this vegetarian should be pleased that silicon is used during plant metabolism, I guess I'll have to expect us humans to use silicon, even if we don't need it to help us see better with eye contacts, or comically exaggerate our breast size, or even use integrated circuits to help set off some cool fireworks, because silicon has to be cooler than just the beauty of a sun beach at sunset. Yeah. You learn a lot of stuff, but you know you don't think about it. You know, I mean, I think silicon. There's a little bit of silicon on our bones, 
and the, the, light, the bowl pill I take from Life Extension has a little silicone in it. Oh, I mean, I was going to say, it, it, I mean, I'm not actually going to talk about every single use of the yeah, element. Well, had that, yeah. But, yeah. but it was like, you don't realize there are you know, all of these elements that go into a lot of different things. Or even if something's really bad for you, we can actually figure out how to use it for a good use for us humans somehow. What I love yeah. is, don't you love the research or something like this? I think it's so that's cool. Really yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm like zinc and, and calcium, <laughs> zinc and calcium, and uh, and uh, what is the other one? Uh, Krypton are the ones I was working on next, but I'm going to research them a bit more. I've, I've started them, and I'm like, All right. I love, I love the idea. I really think. Um, I what am I going to do with beryllium? Okay. I, this I, think I think if I get them together, I might release it for scars and have like a you know, periodic table of poetry kind of thing. So. Oh, cool. And actually, I've got a web page where I list them all, and I have the periodic table, and I have it all grayed out, and I have it non grayed out for the ones that I've already done. So you can see it's filling out more. Janet, is that accessible? Yeah, um, if you go to Scars on TV and click on Kuipers and go to poetry and see it all there, or if anybody wants to know info about it, yeah, I can. Uh, send those links to I'd you. Love to. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to. Have periodic it. table yeah, of poetry. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a great concept to me. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, very, very you look nice. for things to write about, and usually I'm always writing about death and bad stuff yeah. and depression <laughs> and stuff. And, that's no, my, no, and, actually, like, and of course, and that's what, as I said, that's where some of this stuff is going to. I, because I, I talk about bringing your own yeah. experience. Yeah, so you bring, yeah, like talking about going to the gem show and looking at cubic right. zirconia. Yeah, I love that. You know. No, but you know what the whole thing is that, you know, like you said, all. I always say, when have you ever met a happy poet? <laughs> you know, I mean, poets, we're not usually very happy people. I mean, Because it's usually when you're angry that you think of writing, oh, I'm so happy, I'm going to write yeah, a poem. I mean, you know, come really, on, that's you know. not that common. It's it's not, not, if they're happy, if they're happy they call them versifications, uh, I, I as long as they're not Joffrey Stewart. <laughs> 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 these are, these are happy poems. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah.